There's the Mongoose Ledge X1. I turned that into Project Ledge X1 Stage 3. I had it right out here a few weeks ago. It's amazing. Today I'm on its big brother. This is the Mongoose Ledge X2. And I say big brother not in project form, but in factory form. And you can see it is no longer factory. I've done a few modifications here. My goal with, I, I don't know if I'm going to call this, a, yeah I will, Project Ledge X2 Stage 1. I'll just call it that and you'll see a lot of it's still factory because my goal here is to not go crazy like I did with the Ledge X1 project but instead take everything that works on this Ledge X2 out of the box. Only put on the needed parts to make this what I consider to be usable as a first go on the trail entry level mountain bike because in my opinion this is a good and worthy frame especially you know considering it comes from big box origins this is a Walmart bike but it has the tapered head tube, it's full suspension, internal cable routing, even the provision for a dropper post, and the reason I don't have a dropper I'll get to in just a moment. But I also want to mention this is the exact same frame that is on the Ledge X1, it's just a different color. So when I took that Ledge X1 and I put 29er wheels on it in one of my live streams, and it fit perfectly, I kind of knew something was up then, but I confirmed it with the Mongoose engineers, this is the exact same frame. All the same specs, just a different color. Quick rundown of what I kept. I kept the factory 29 inch wheels. These are double wall alloy, 29 by 2.25 tires. So very usable. You know, I'll replace these as I go, but from a budget perspective as of what is needed, just fine for out of the box, especially considering not only are they double wall alloy and 29er, that's not a free will, that is an actual cassette. Finally getting cassettes on our budget big box bikes. Or at least on this one, I hope that this is just the start of a new revolution, but also this has the Pro Rush. This is a very rudimentary clutch and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The Pro Rush is kind of a make do. Derailleur setup and shifter setup. The shifters can get a little finicky. So can these derailleurs. As a matter of fact, I had to take this one to my local bike shop to get it to shift out. In my review video, I mentioned it was a bit clunky and I could only get into a few gears. It took them quite a bit, but they finally got it. They said it's about 95% and that's where I would rate it after riding it here up onto the trail, but I haven't ridden it much and I'll talk about that in just a second, but Pro Rush cassette. The one by, and I left this factory one by here, a 32. This isn't total generic. That is a Pro Wheel logo here for our Pro Wheel crank arms. I left the factory shock. And this shock, it kind of has about two settings. Either pogo stick or very, very firm. But I find if I put it in the very firm setting, just tighten down on that tension nut, enough to make it firm, it does work. Meaning it gives, even at its most firm setting, enough travel, just enough to make this a true full suspension bike. I kept the factory seat post and factory seat. And I'll talk, well, I'll talk about that now. The reason I did that, you can see where the saddle is here. I left all the reflectors on this on purpose, especially back here at the seat, because I wanna talk about why I did this. This is a 29er bike, even though it's the exact same frame, the difference between 27.5 wheels and 29 inch wheels on the same frame is the difference between me being able to actually use a dropper post versus it being too high when I extend it all the way. Meaning if I have a dropper and I have it down, I have to extend it all the way up and then slowly work it down to my preferred height. And that just makes it kind of useless in my opinion because it doesn't have that quick use of the remote up front to get me exactly where I need to be. Due to that, I left it as is now if this were. My only ledge, and I didn't have Project Ledge X1 Stage 3, I was going to build this out. I would first convert it to 27.5, but then I would go with the dropper. Okay, so I've got factory wheels so far. The factory crank set, almost all of it. I'll get to what I changed on it in just a second. The factory cassette rear wheel at the back, the factory derailleur, the factory seat post, seat post clamp, and saddle. And of course, the factory shock, at least for now. And by the way, if you're new to these bikes, you've never seen the Mongoose Ledge before, you should watch my other videos first, but if you haven't, those aren't bushings, no plastic, they're actually bearings in there. Now to what I changed, and remember, I tried to keep this 100% budget, only changing what I felt needed to be changed and or what I already had parts for. 
that starts up top with these bars. These are actually the exact same bars I had on Project Ledge X1 Stage 1. Remember, I cut them down a little too much, so they're down just a little below 720 millimeters. But I didn't want to waste them. Two, I thought both bikes would look kind of cool with the same look at the very least up front and if you're familiar with the other ledge project you'll know that initially i was going to put bigger bars a larger diameter on here and i had that stem and those bars i returned the bars and i swapped out the stem for this one knowing i had these bars so that gave me fun mountain bike handlebars and i wanted to keep it all fun up top so I went ahead used one of my fun upper headsets now i say fun upper because lower is not a fun headset down here this is a Jessica lower headset cup to taper for this fork, which is not a tapered fork. I probably should have left that factory, but I started knocking things out before I thought about it. So I'd spent, I think those are 20 bucks, 24 bucks, something like that. I'll put a link down in the description. This Jessica headset, one of the benefits with it, it works with both tapered forks and straight steer, which is what this is. And you saw this fork in my most recent video where I talked about budget fork facts, budget air fork facts. This is a ZTZ. Depending where you look, it's either a ZTZ factory or a ZTZ racing. It's an air fork, an air fork with a manual lockout, or as they call it, a speed lockout. I guess speed is how fast you can work your hands, but it has 120 millimeters of travel I just mentioned. You know, these forks, <laughs> I've used budget forks for, well, the entire time I've had this channel, and I've had good success. But recently, and in that budget fork facts video, I started talking about some of these budget forks are just basically rebrands, a repackage, or come out of the same factory as some other budget forks. There are differences in prices, which I guess can make a difference, because let me tell you about this fork. I will never, ever again use a ztz fork first and foremost after i made that video a lot of people started scaring me specifically about this fork talking about horror stories people using this fork and having problems well i'm at wildwood i'm at the back side of the trail but i rode up our newly graded and super smooth entry into the trail to get here and i was about halfway up i started having this noise and you'll know the noise I'm talking about on a big box fork where it bottoms up. You hit a bump and it makes that clunk. I had that noise combined with almost a click. At first I thought the cables were slapping each other, but I knew it was on super smooth, so it shouldn't be doing that. Then I thought, maybe do I have spokes loose? It was this fork. I checked it before I hit the trail. It had 100 PSI. Halfway up the trail, well, I'll show you. I'll cut in here and show you how much resistance I have right now. It's down to about 20 PSI, at least when I started this. I don't know when I filmed that, if it's changed from there, but it blows out its air. So I've blown out the seals on this on super smooth, not on rough terrain, super smooth. So thank goodness I wasn't on rough terrain with this. I will never again buy another ZTZ fork. Now I only paid $112.99 for this. That is an air fork, so note that but based on the people and it is possible let me say this it is possible to just get a bad fork i mean that happens that happens with anything you could buy a ferrari and get a bad ferrari something with a bad motor but based on the number of people that i've seen complain about issues with this exact same fork and me having one right out of the gate on smooth smooth terrain i won't use the ztz again so kind of a fail there but let's for the sake of this video just assume that I used maybe a U-Ding fork or something like that. Something I've already used or an affordable Sun Tour fork. So I'm going to budget in here $199 to say that I used a Sun Tour fork instead of this ZTZ. Just because remember, my goal here to make the cheapest Project Ledge X2 that I can make that actually works. Something that I could do some light trail riding up. And that makes number one to be changed on this bike, to make it trail worthy, a fork. So first, a budget fork. So again, $199, don't count that. I paid for this, unless you just wanna risk it and then you can make it cheaper. Number two, the number two change that I feel needs to be made to make this trail worthy or usable, that's hydraulic brakes. It comes with mechanical disc from the factory. 
you can use those yes but if you have a couple of hundred spare bucks or if this weren't pre middle post whatever we're in pandemic life where things are super crazy expensive right now you could get these for about 70 bucks i have some that you're going to see in an upcoming video that were 70 dollars they're a generic brand but they do work for me though i used shimano it's what i trust that gave me hydraulics but that also created another problem now this fork has failed me i've already talked about that and i mentioned i upgraded the brakes to these hydraulics but let me tell you another area where this fork has failed me these brakes 180 millimeter rotors from the factory that means you have to have a little standoff here and this is an adapter but you'll notice i have a weirdly placed spacer right there that's because this fork is so mismanufactured that these mounts for the brake, even with the 180 millimeter adapter, it was grinding on the rotor. I had to put a spacer in there just to get it to work and that's a second, third, fifth, whatever final strike for this ZTZ fork. Again, that's on this one, but I've had so many people comment that I'm thinking I'm not alone in my hatred of these forks. So this is a rare time where you see me really rant against a product. Original designed, I guess that means original designed not to work. Well, I'm really going after this thing. The other necessary upgrade, gotta get rid of those factory pedals. They are slippery as ice when it gets wet. I used race face chesters. I could have went with Fookers here, but I didn't have a color in stock that I liked. I did have these race face chesters, so I'll put those on little extra money but you know everybody loves a race face chester and that's really it that's all that is a must to replace to get this what i feel is trail worthy and the bars the only reason i changed that's because i already had these but also the factory bars are steel so that's added weight and speaking of weight i did shave off a few pounds with this fork and those bars but i didn't weigh it before i came out here so i'll put it on your screen there you go a look at project ledge x2 stage one again very very budget focused my total budget for this well let me add it up actually i don't know the exact prices while i'm standing out here on the trail so i'll add it up and i'll put it on your screen but remember you're gonna see a price that's augmented a bit because i'm gonna say 179 to 199 for the fork instead of this 113 which i looked today and these are now 119 almost 120 still not worth it give this to me for 50 and it's not if it's not going to make it pedaling up the smooth entrance onto the trail then it's definitely not going to make it or not going to be something i trust to ride the rest of the trip next up stage two where not only replace this fork i might play around i don't know if i'm going to play around with these wheels or put different wheels on it but i know i'll change out the crank set gonna change out this rear gearing as well because these pro rush i've already mentioned you know they they'll do and the fact that they have a clutch on the big box bikes under well we've seen them what on 248 dollar bikes now with a clutch from a big box store that's amazing but the shifters are a little finicky. They can be hard to tune, but I'll take what I can get. They're better than having a tourney or even worse, having a flat face derailleur. So thankfully we got Pro Rush, but that will be changed once I get this one more stage up. And I want your help with this one. Should I use a DNM coil back here or a DNM air shock for stage two? Comment below with which you would prefer to see on this bike for that point. As a matter of fact, boat on everything should i leave these factory wheels because cassette ready in the back should i leave that or change those as well so comment with that wheels shock do you want to see me put this as a dropper post or convert it to 27.5 and make ledge x2 and ledge x1 a very similar setup minus then i'm not going to spend all those bucks that i spent on ledge x1 that was a one-off so if you want to see what a very budget version would do side by side, then let me know. Thanks for watching Kev Central. I hope you are subscribed. If you aren't, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have that notification bell active and give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Have a great day.